Hello everyone. I've just arrived at the Nationalities Museum across from the Minority Village theme park, or whatever you call it, in Yunnan. This is the day after I got here, and I'm by myself today. My dad is not feeling up to walking around, so I'm doing this by myself. And unfortunately, I did not bring an umbrella with me, so I got rained on quite a bit trying to run over here from the opposite side of the street. But anyways, let's go check this place out. This appears to be the map for the museum. On the top we have the ethnic costumes and textile tools, then flexible exhibition hall, so I'm guessing that means that it's a temporary hall, and then ancient documents of Yunnan ethnic groups. That should be interesting. And then, second floor, we have bars and band art collection, Junxiang Hao Puarti flagship store, experience pavilion, not sure that's quite actually what that translates to, painting and calligraphy museum, jewelry pavilion, that should be fun, and royal pavilion should also be interesting, and then we have a Tibetan pavilion. All right, there appears to be a courtyard right outside in the middle of the entire museum. Not sure why they have a courtyard, but at least you get to see how nice the weather is here. It was still raining hard, but at least it changed somewhat since I got here. Well, walking around and there's a lot that seems closed off and I have stuff like this showing up. This might be a very quick museum today. All right, our first exhibit. Let's take a look. So they've got a little bit about each ethnic group, each of the 26 they have here in Yunnan, in little posters like this. And each of the posters carries a small description of the amount of people in each minority group, and also where they're located, as well as other small descriptions about the ways that the people live, the language, and some traditional festivals that each group celebrates. They also included a map of the distribution of where each ethnic group is located inside Yunnan province. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the whole thing in one shot because of the space that they gave me. So I guess we're going to be saying ancient costumes all the way up to the modern times. And the ancient costumes were actually just a couple of panels long. And then right after that, it was right into the traditional garments that are worn today. Now this is what I was expecting when they said costume exhibit. All of the different outfits for each of the minority groups here, the classic outfits. There are many different colors and variations, but these are the ones they've got on display. You even have the kids' outfits. The minority groups and each of their descriptions for their outfits are too many. So rather than just going ahead and giving you a description about each piece, I'm going to go ahead and just let you see each one. And I decided to just keep in the ones that I think are the most amazing.
What did you think of the extravagance of that last piece in particular? That was probably my favorite one from the exhibit. At least, until you get to the next hallway, which has even more amazing outfits. And with that, the traditional outfit section was at its end. And then it was off to the next section. The next section appears to be for religious and sacrificial occasions. Not only do they have all of the outfits at these exhibits, they also show how all of these are made, including the dyeing techniques and the patterns that they put on, why they put these patterns on, certain outfits and other items, whether it's just embroidery or if it's also shoes or even hats. There's symbolic meaning to each and every design that's put on every piece. But probably my favorite section came right after this, the jewelry and almost all of it was pure silver. Whether it was necklaces, bells, bracelets, belts, or belt buckles, everything had its own unique designs, depending on the minority group from which it belonged. But they also included my favorite stuff to look at, which is daggers, and of course, the best thing of all, ceremonial blades. I wish they'd had more of the latter, but Probably the one piece that I was expecting the least to see here, however, was this one. A crown. I can't even imagine how expensive that must have been. Moving on to the next part, it was about the brocade. And boy was there a lot of it here as well. They also had displays on contraptions that demonstrated how they put all of this brocade together. From the machinery to the yarn, or even handmade. They also had this video that demonstrated how one does it by hand. And boy, I can't imagine the hard work that's involved in trying to make this. One neat thing too, was there was this ancient piece that highlighted people making brocade, although I didn't see any specific date from when it was from. So that was it for this first colorful section of the museum. Let's go off to the next hall and see what they've got to show us. Now, I'm not understanding why this one's here. Because there is no reason for a safety belt in any place like this. The rain appears to have stopped for a moment, and that means now I can go ahead and look at all these bonsai that they have. The reason there's bonsai here is actually because apparently Japan some organization in Japan made a pretty big donation to this museum and as part of that they put all of these bonsai here. This whole outdoor section is full of bonsai. Now one thing about bonsai that most people probably don't know is that like with most other aspects of Japanese culture a lot of it as is the case with bonsai originates with Chinese art and landscape design. In China, it goes by the name Punjing, and was a common site in gardens throughout China since the 3rd and 4th centuries. Well, this explains a lot. Some of those sounds that I apparently thought was thunder 
is all the construction that's actually going on inside this part of the museum. So unfortunately for me, a lot of the museum right now is under construction. They're changing around a whole bunch of the exhibits, maybe half the museum. And that means that while you may not be able to see much in my video today, maybe if you go during another time, probably winter, or sometime after that, you might be a bit luckier with what you're able to see if you choose to come here. But thankfully for me, there were still some good exhibits that were open, like this one you see here, Ancient Documents of Yunnan Ethnic Groups. It begins with a description about how, in the past, they used wood carving and rope knotting to record events through the use of various objects that are found in nature. Every single one of these would have had a different purpose for giving different kinds of messages, and this is what they did instead of writing at the time. Eventually, we apparently moved on to stuff like this. Like most other societies around the world, writing began here with the use of pictographs and symbols, but it eventually moved on to early cases of using writing systems that we can recognize through rubbings that are provided in the exhibit. Personally, I don't think it gets much cooler than when you see an astronomical calendar from a long, long time ago, and it's still in pretty good condition. Not only was there that calendar, but there were old manuscripts of religious texts, as well as, for various rites and occasions, even storytelling, among all the different minority groups of Yunnan province. Although some weren't able to be preserved as well as others, one thing that blew me away was this. This piece here is known as the Book of Songs of the Zhuang people, and every single symbol represents a different song that still exists among the Zhuang people today in pictographic form. Pretty neat, huh? As you can see behind me, there's a lot more to see in this area, so if you want to spend your time and you come to this place, you'll be able to see a whole lot to do with the written history of minority groups throughout Yunnan. And now we've moved on to the pottery exhibit. Again, just like in the other parts of the museum so far, I'm going to highlight what I think are the standout pieces. So, if you want to see the full exhibit for everything, you're just going to have to come here yourself. The exhibit quickly moved on though from the pottery to include various types of sculptures that included the creature that you see here stacked on top of one another known as the Bi-Style Earthen Cat, of which they provide many examples. There are a few other interesting pieces too. After that, in the next hallway, there are a whole lot of masks, which have been used for a variety of rites, rituals, and celebrations among the minority groups of Yunnan province. And there's an incredible amount of variety between each minority group in all facets of the masks, whether it's in the coloration, the size and shapes, the creatures and myths that they're based off of, or the materials that are even used, like the hair, whether it's actually horse hair, another animal's hair, or even human hair used in the creation of these masks. This is one museum where the descriptions are pretty well translated into English, and you're able to learn a whole lot about the occasions for which each mask may be used. This is not an exhibit I would have really expected to see anywhere. Hopefully it's going to be a little interesting. One thing I'd always considered to look nice was roof tiles that are used on wealthy individuals' homes or inside temples, even imperial palaces across China. Although I never paid close attention to the detailing used on these parts, which are known as wadang, the circular or sometimes triangular or wave-shaped end pieces that hang over the sides of the roofs to which they are attached. Like many other aspects of Chinese culture, they date back thousands of years, and only grew more intricate and detailed over time. They include depictions of all different types of animals, whether it's insects, dragons, and they also include plants and traditional Chinese characters sometimes. Not all of them are made of the same material, and they have a whole lot of them on display. I kinda wish that more places used something like this on their roofs. 
But it wasn't long until I moved on to the next exhibit. That was a short one which highlighted musical instruments used by minority groups, again, in Yunnan province. And then it was time for the last exhibit of the museum, which began with folk paintings from around the province, many of which were related to religious iconography or historical events, although a lot of them were dedicated to mythology. But the one piece that I think needs to be highlighted especially is this 14 meter long piece. This work focuses on the Nashi people's depiction of the afterlife, divided into four parts, the ghostum, the earth, natural paradise, and heaven, through the Dongba script, a pictographic form of writing that's still used by the Nashi people today. Sorry if you got a little nauseous from that shot. But anyways, lastly, after that, it was on to a section highlighting metal craftsmanship, which began with works of black copper and gold inlay, before moving on to works that utilize tin and a speckled technique, before lastly giving way to incredible works of silver, like this container used to store puar, or my favorite piece, this silver hot pot with a pattern of nine dragons. And so that brought my time at this museum to an end. But before I left, I looked to see what they had in the gift shop, which included a lot of fabric, which I ended up deciding on not getting before deciding to head on out. We just finished all the exhibits they have here today and it's raining again and harder than before. Hopefully I'll be able to get a taxi and get back to the hotel fast enough that I don't soak everything, including my camera and phone. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you when we go to our next city. And with that, we're done with our time here in Kunming. So I hope you join us next time when we come to you from a new city in China, Guiyang, where we go to see a museum that highlights the Miao people's culture. So I hope you're looking forward to seeing it. See you next time. Thank you again for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you have not already done so. Also, please share this channel with others so we can make the channel grow together as I continue to put out more videos.